Good morning. Welcome early birds. We're going to do something different this morning for gathering music. Um, we will be taking requests, any kind of, any Christmas music or seasonal music that you'd like to do that you haven't heard or that you have heard and want to do again. Um, so um, any, any, any requests for the band? By number, please. One forty seven. That's the first Noel. One forty seven. How many verses? Which two? We're doing the first two verses. One fourteen. Right. Away to major. One thirteen, angels we have heard on high.
157, which is? Okay, uh, 157, I danced this morning. In the morning, excuse me, in the morning. Why, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Um, 158, which is right the next uh, same page, Born in the Night, Mary's Child. Okay, 135. There's a star in the east. Thank you, gathering group. Good to have you play for us 
this Sunday as well as other times during the Christmas season. It's been great having your music. We do welcome you to uh, this first Sunday after Christmas here at First Presbyterian Church. We would ask that you would take a moment and uh, greet those who are joining you for worship, maybe someone you haven't had the opportunity to speak to. Good morning. Did you have a good Christmas? Very nice. Hello, Ben. Did you have a good Christmas? Hello, good morning, how are you? Just fine. Good, good, good. good morning. Very well, thank you. It's so much more fun being down here. You oh, get good. to greet everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did I see you in the sky yesterday? We'd ask that you would take the friendship register that you will find in your pew at one end or the other and that you would uh, fill it out and so that we might have a record of your attendance. And if you're a first-time visitor, we would ask that you would fill out the upper portion so we might get to know you just a little better. Dr. and Mrs. Negley are enjoying some vacation time away, and uh, they will be returning tomorrow. As you have been reading about our Advent Devotional 2015, we are featuring uh, members and friends nativities that have a special meaning uh, to you and we are still needing some so if you have your nativities out and uh, it's a special one and has a story to go along with it we would invite you to give us a call or sign up your name I'll be happy to come and take a photograph of the nativity and uh, you're invited to either write up a small narrative about it or I can interview you and then I can write about it. Uh, but we do need a few more to complete this project, so if you would, uh, please sign up either in the Narthex or give me a call here at the church. We do thank the Jazz Baterians for providing music for us today, and we also give thanks for those who assisted with the after Christmas breakfast. We had a good time downstairs, and we thank all those who helped with that endeavor. I would call your attention to all the announcements printed in your bulletin. Let us now continue to prepare our hearts as we worship God.
Would you join me now in the responsive call to worship? Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. Christ himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Christ is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. In Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Countless others, we join our voices in this Christ hymn, praising and thanking God as we worship. Please be seated. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, God gave us his son Jesus and Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sin before God and one another, first using the printed prayer found in your bulletin, and then let us observe a few moments for silent reflection and confession. Let us pray together. Almighty God, the Christmas stories are filled with examples of persons who knew your will and did it. In response to Gabriel's announcement to Mary, she said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. When your will was revealed to Joseph in dreams, he acted accordingly. The shepherds and wise men also heeded your will as revealed to them by angels and through a dream. Forgive us when we have failed to seek your will and proceed with our own plans. Forgive us when we have known what you required 
and disobeyed by commission or omission. By your Holy Spirit, help us to amend our ways and strengthen us to be faithful in seeking and doing your will, as was our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us, and strengthen us to be faithful and obedient in doing your will. Amen. in a position to condemn us, only Christ, and Christ was born, lived, died, and was raised to new life for us. If anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. The old life has gone. Behold, a new life has begun. Friends, I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Please be seated. Recalling the nativity story, the first ones to come to the stable were the shepherds. From the scriptures, we gather that they came to welcome the Savior empty-handed. No gift for the Christ child from this group is mentioned. What is mentioned is that they came and adored the baby Jesus and told Mary and Joseph, all that they had seen and heard. With adoration and in response to the good news of Christmas, let us now present God's tithe and our offerings.
Let us pray. Gracious God, the carol reminds us, O come, let us adore him, O come, let us adore him, O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Like the shepherds, we have come to adore you, but we have not come empty-handed. In addition to our adoration, we lay these gifts, your tithe, and our offerings before you. We bring them with our love and gratitude, trusting that you can use them and us to proclaim the good news of Christmas to a world still in great need of hearing how greatly you have loved and love this world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. At this time, I would invite the younger disciples to come forward and meet me on the front pew. And as they come, let us join together in singing the third stanza of Away in a Manger. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. I've got a question for you. Can you tell me one present, one gift that you got for Christmas? What'd you get for Christmas? One gift. A bike? Oh, that's nice. Two-wheeler? Two wheels? Okay, that's nice. What about you? What'd you get for Christmas? Pardon me? Healy's? Okay, you, can you tell me a little bit more about that? What is that? Oh, shoes that you skate on. Okay. Hadn't heard of those. What about you? Hmm? A paintball gun. I have heard of that. <laughs> have you used it yet? No? Okay. You go to a special place to use that, don't you? Your parents will appreciate that, I'm sure. <laughs> And what about you? An electronic snap circuit? The names they come up with toys for, na- to- for toys these days. Well, I, want- I brought some things in my bag. I got a flashlight. This is supposed to be a real super duper flashlight. It's-, it's a small packaging and everything. And it's supposed to put out a really bright light Well, it doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> do you ever have trouble with flashlights? What do you think it could be? I mean, it's brand new. It's supposed to put out a lot of light. What do you think? Do you have any idea what could be wrong with it? Batteries. Yes, I think that's the problem. Because it doesn't sound like there's anything in there. Let's see if I've got some batteries. Goodness gracious. Because this is brand new flashlight. It ought to work. Let's see. Okay. Ah, there we go. See, that's a pretty bright light. And it's also got a dimmer. You know, that's pretty nice, isn't it? It's pretty nice that it works when you have batteries in it. Well, I brought something else that I know has batteries in it and that I really like a lot. I like raccoons. And this raccoon reads a book with me. Have you ever seen something like that? You have. (laughs) It's a nice toy, isn't it? You know, I was reading here, it said that it was good for adults and children. I was so glad to hear that. (laughs) Because, listen, listen to what it says. I'm ready for you to read me my story. 
Watson is ready for me to read his story. It's a little long, so I'm not going to read it all, but I want you to see that Watson can follow along and can read this book with me. One sunny day, a clever raccoon was sniffing around in a wild lilac bush. Even though the flowery smell made him sneeze, Watson needed to keep his sniffer in tip-top shape so he could track down clues. You see, Watson loves solving mysteries. I love mysteries. He loves mysteries. When a baby deer's spots went missing or a smelly smell needed investigating, the other animals knew exactly who to call. And before they could say April showers, Watson would be on the case. Watson had just finished sniffing practice when he heard a big, noisy ruckus. What's that, he thought. Could it be a miss? Before he even finished his thought, a nearby squirrel cried out, Watson! Somebody call Watson! Ready or not, here I come! <laughs> Watson followed the voices of many forest animals until he found himself face to face with a very sad-looking Lola ladybug. Lola blew her nose into her tiny hanky and cried, Watson, I could really use your help. Sometimes he's very anxious. <laughs> it's awful, sniffled Lola. I can't find my best friend, Kip Caterpillar. There, there, said Watson. Tell me everything. Well, said Lola, he's long and stripy, and he said he'd have a big surprise next time I saw him, but that was days ago. Oh, Watson, can you help me find Kip? Watson thought about his first clue. Lola had said Kip was long and stripy. Long and stripy? Hey, Watson had just seen something long and stripy. Where was it? He looked left and right, nothing. He looked straight ahead, nothing. Then Watson looked behind himself, and that's when he spied it. It was his tail. <laughs> Watson saw it wasn't a caterpillar. So I'm going to stop there because Watson would like to tell you more and it's a great story. What do you think the, about the, happened to the caterpillar? It turned into a butterfly. That's exactly what happened. It was found, Kip Caterpillar was found, but Kip Caterpillar was in a different shape from what he had been in. And before we go, Watson wants to say something to you. cute toy. If you come over to my house sometime, we might play. <laughs> now, so what does this talk about batteries have to do with us and God? God gives us strength to do things that we might find difficult to do, or we might find challenging to do, or something we're not even sure we want to do. But God gives us strength. God tells us what he wants us to do, and God gives us the strength to do it. God always equips us, gives us those things that we need to do what he wants us to do, and he especially gives us the strength to do it. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and let us talk to God. Most gracious and loving God, we do give you thanks for this wonderful season of Christmas. We thank you for all the good gifts we have received. We thank you, O oh God, that when you call us to do things, you enable us to do them, and you give us strength to do them. Help us to obey all your laws, help us to keep the commandments, and help us always to show the love of Christ each and every day of this coming year. Help us to celebrate a happy new year and keep us always in your loving care. For we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you.
I think I heard Mike say that we were going, they were going to try something today, and I think I want to try something too. How many of you have ever sang the Lord's Prayer? If you have, raise your hand. How many of you who haven't sang the Lord's Prayer would like to sing the Lord's Prayer? This happened in a couple of presbytery meetings not too long ago. And when I first saw it, that we were going to sing the Lord's Prayer, I thought, oh my gosh. But it worked out. It really did. All the voices blended together. And so today, we're going to try it. And even if we don't make the most wonderful sound there ever was, we're lifting our voices in praise, and we're lifting our voices in prayer as we pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray as members of God's family. I'll try not to pitch it too high, and so I hope you will join me when we come to that time in our prayers of the people. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of Jesus Christ who came to share our humanity and who now lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Giver of every perfect gift, how can we begin to thank you for all of the wonderful gifts of this Christmas tide? Long before Christmas arrived, we derived so much joy in making or selecting gifts that would please the recipients in writing cards and letters to maintain connection with loved ones and friends close by or far away, in decorating our homes and this our home away from home with candles, nativity scenes, garlands, wreaths, poinsettias, and trees, in attending concerts or plays, in baking holiday treats or making favorite foods that family members or guests will enjoy, in showing charity or compassion through anonymous gift giving or acts of service, and in dinners, parties, or going caroling. With the arrival of Christmas, we welcome the opportunity to gather for worship on Christmas Eve, to sing the familiar carols, to hear the beloved story, to offer our gifts for medical benevolences, and to see the darkness of the sanctuary dispelled by our candles raised in honor of the one born to be the light of the world. Many gave of their time and talents to serve the least of your brothers and sisters at the soup kitchen on Christmas Day. We were blessed to enjoy the company of loved ones and friends, perhaps to share a meal and to exchange gifts. As a church family, we are thankful to enjoy an after Christmas breakfast and we appreciate all who prepared to serve us. Most of all, we are grateful for Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, whose birth once again we have celebrated and whose second coming in power and glory we await. O oh, great physician, we lift up to you our prayers for those whose health has failed, for those facing surgery, for those recovering from injuries or surgery, for those undergoing therapies or treatments in the quest to regain their health. Comfort and strengthen them. Blessed Lord, who wept at the grave of your friend Lazarus and who shared the sorrow of his sisters Martha and Mary, we know you care for those who are grieving. Embrace them in your love and grant them your precious gifts of a peace this world cannot give and the hope of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, hear our prayers for those caught in the paths of the winter storms that disrupt power that cause accidents and that pose even greater hardships on the homeless and poor. Hear our prayers for the addicted as temptations are often greater at this season. Hear our prayers for military personnel and their families who mark still another holiday separated from loved ones and who anxiously long to be reunited. Hear our prayers for the hungry. Hear our prayers for those who are depressed who have borne many disappointments in 2014 and who have little hope of things changing for them in 2015. Hear our prayers for those who experience distress and turmoil in their homes, 
for those who know the pain of strained or broken relationships amongst family members. Hear our prayers for those who languish in prisons. Hear our prayers for the lonely. We pray for peace in our world and we long for senseless acts of violence to end. We pray for those who protect and serve us, asking you to guard them. And we pray as Jesus taught us to do for our enemies, asking you to help us to love them. All these prayers and the silent ones of our hearts, we offer in the name of Jesus Christ. And together we pray the family prayer he taught singing. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes to us from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Colossians, the first chapter, reading verses 9 through 20. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. One of the saddest discoveries of a parent or a child on Christmas morning is 
discovering that Santa Claus, in his haste to put the gifts under the tree, failed to install the battery or batteries to make the toy amuse, the game to challenge, or the gadget to work. The battery is, or the batteries are, of great importance. Without them, the present loses some of its allure, and the receiver is disappointed that the gift does not immediately function as was anticipated. Equally frustrating is having bought something believing that the battery or batteries are included. Once home, the person sorts through all the packaging looking for the necessary source or sources of power to no avail and then reads that it is not or they are not enclosed. Invariably, the person will go to the place in his or her home where extra batteries are stored only to discover that he or she does not have the right number or size of batteries. Often, you need just one more battery than you already have or ones of another size required by the particular object. It seems that you may have every other size in the house, but you don't have that particular one. And so this situation necessitates an unplanned trip to the store to purchase the right number and size of batteries needed, thus delaying the person's gratification and the use of the appliance or device. Batteries are necessary. Batteries are important. Today's scripture lesson is a portion of a letter written by Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae. Paul bids them grace and peace from God, and Paul gives thanks to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ for the faith that they have exhibited and for the love that they have for all of the saints. Paul has heard how the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ has been growing in their midst and bearing fruit. He commends Epaphras for sharing the hope that is now theirs through their having believed the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to them. Since hearing this good news, the Apostle Paul and Timothy have not ceased to pray for them. Their prayer on behalf of the Colossians makes two requests of God. First, Paul and Timothy pray that the Colossians may be able to discern what the will of God is. Second, they pray that once knowing what the will of God is, that the Colossians may be able to perform it. Of the first request regarding knowing the will of God, biblical scholar and commentator William Barclay has noted, we are trying not so much to make God listen to us as to make ourselves listen to God. We are trying not to persuade God to do what we want, but to find out what God wants us to do. It so often happens that in prayer we are really saying, Thy will be changed when we ought to be praying, Thy will be done. The secret to knowing the will of God is threefold. First and foremost, we need to be quiet and to listen to the still small voice of God. This means that we will remove ourselves from all those distractions that would hinder our hearing and discerning of God's will. Second, we need to be attentive to signs that may confirm what we believe to be God's will. And third, we need to listen to the wise counsel of others who know us well and have prayed for us as we seek to know what God's will for our lives is. A middle-aged farmer who had been desiring for years to become an evangelist, was out working in the field one day when he decided to take a rest under a tree. As he looked up into the sky, he saw the clouds, and it seemed that two clouds seemed to form the letters P and C, 
Well, immediately he hopped up, sold his farm, and went out to preach Christ. And he felt that that was God's leading. Unfortunately, he was a horrible preacher. And after one of his sermons, a neighbor came forward and whispered in his ear, Are you sure God wasn't just trying to tell you to plant corn? He wanted desperately to preach and was eager that his way be God's way. He was attentive to signs, but he misunderstood them. He relied on himself to know what God's will was and sought no counsel from others. Though this may be a humorous and exaggerated example of seeking to know what God's will is, we can learn from it as we seek to know what God would have us to do. Paul and Timothy asked that the Colossians may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that they may lead lives worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing to God as they bear fruit in every good work and as they grow in the knowledge of God. Once God's will is made known to the persons, God expects them to perform it, to act accordingly, to fulfill God's will. It is not enough just to know what God's will is, for we are called to act upon it. We are called to obey, to do what God has revealed to us. As people are obedient to God's will, they will lead lives worthy of the Lord. They will be growing in their knowledge of God and will discover their ability to do what God requires or calls them to do. It has been said that God does not call us to any task without equipping us for it. If we are called to preach or teach, then God will make it possible for us to learn how to do so. One of my female colleagues in seminary, Mary Beth, insisted that she did not want to preach. She felt ill-equipped to preach. And she said, I'm not going to do it. They can't make me. But she did it anyway. She said that she wasn't going to preach many times before our first sermons. And yet when she preached, she preached confidently, and she preached very well. Sometimes newly trained Stephen ministers are anxious about providing one-to-one -one care, but they have been equipped for the task. They have undergone 50 hours of training and have done role plays to simulate situations that they might encounter once they are providing care for their care receivers. In verse 11 of Colossians 1, we learn it is not enough just to have the gifts, skills, and training to perform God's will. Paul and Timothy prayed that the Colossians may be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power. God gave my colleague Mary Beth the strength to preach, to do that which she felt she could not do. God gives strength to Stephen ministers as they go for that first visit and as they continue to interact with their care receiver, ever seeking to do his or her best to offer help and support to the care receivers. The strength that God gives us is our power source. If God calls us to certain tasks, God equips us for them so that we may be successful. God gives us the strength we need to do what God has called us to do. So, in effect, the battery is included. Remember, Moses doubted his ability to lead the people of Israel. Moses also doubted God's ability to enable him to convince the people to believe and to speak eloquently. God strengthened Moses by giving him signs and by allowing Aaron to speak the words Moses felt 
unable to speak. The Lord promised to strengthen Moses so that he would be with Moses' mouth and teach him what to say. The Lord gives us the strength to do that which God asks us or requires us to do. Furthermore, Paul prays asking that the Colossians may be given three qualities that will serve them well in life. He asks that they may receive endurance, patience, and joy. Endurance is bearing with difficult situations and turning them into glory. A popular way of saying this has been, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. You're doing something positive with the difficult and the bad situations in life. Patience is bearing with people when they are most difficult. And we must admit that we encounter difficult people almost every day. And sometimes it is difficult dealing with them and keeping our patience. But even in that situation, one does not lose patience with belief in and hope for others. And joy, joy is that quality which beams in all circumstances. Once again, William Barclay provides us with some wise counsel concerning these three gifts. Barclay writes, So the Christian prayer is, Make me, O Lord, victorious over every circumstance. Make me patient with every person. And with all, give me the joy which no circumstance and no person will ever take away from me. A new year, 2015, is on the horizon for us. In preparation for beginning a new year, it is good to be reminded that regardless of our age, we need to discern God's will for our lives. Upon learning what we believe God is calling us to do, we need to commit ourselves to the task, ever trusting God to equip us with the gifts, skills, and training we need to fulfill our missions. God will also give us the strength when what God calls us or requires us to do seems too much or too difficult. Not knowing what the future holds for us, a petition to God that we may receive endurance, patience, and joy seems appropriate as we begin the new year and as we continue through every day of it. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our affirmation of faith today is the Apostles' Creed. I would invite you to stand if you're physically able and let us affirm what we believe. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
our childhood's pattern. Day by day, like us, he grew. He was little, weak, and helpless. Tears learned smiles like us. And now go into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>